<laughs> so I'm gonna wait just one or two more minutes. If anyone has any questions they wanna ask, you can do it now before we start. About jungle, about ganking. Um, I guess kind of a meta question about jungling, um, as a meta of this discussion, is are we talking about strictly ganking? Should they, um, yeah. Or ha and, or is there any um like gank slash pathing stuff as well, like how to properly path into your gank? No, oh, yeah, it is mostly about like pathing in the ganks, yeah. So like um, Okay, cool, cool. So you will see now, so I'm sharing my screen. Everyone please come and join the stream. It's gonna be mostly about the stages of ganks, okay? So we're gonna divide this into a couple of stages. We're going to have the decision stage, okay, so I'm gonna start right in here. So we're gonna have the decision stage. Okay, let's see. Oh, my pen is not working correctly. What the hell? One second. Is it working now? Okay, it is working now. So the decision stage, okay. Then we're gonna have the execution stage, okay. And then we're gonna have like what to do after the gun, okay. So the post gang stage. So those are the three parts of ganking that I want to focus on today. And after that, we will see the clips that you guys showed me. Okay. So I guess we can start right now. What do you think, Dylan? Should we start? Yeah, sounds good. All right. So basically, for those of you who don't know me yet, I've been playing the game since 2011. I think almost everyone here knows me. Um, I play a lot of lanes, including the jungle, in Challenger, and I also coach it a lot. In fact, I would say that most of my students are junglers. For some reason, I think in the coaching scene, the role that asks for coaching the most is the jungle, because there's this misconception, in my opinion, that to jungle, you need more macro than your lanes, and coaching only teaches you macro. And those are two misconceptions, right? You can teach, and today we will see things that are not only macro. We will see a lot of mechanics and things. And uh, the, other, the other point I want to make is that as much as you need macro in the jungle, you also need a lot of micro, especially in ganks and clears and things like that, okay? So why did we pick ganking as a, as a topic today? Because I think that a lot of junglers nowadays either farm too much and don't even go for ganks, or when they go for ganks, they do it in like the wrong lanes, in the wrong executions. They don't path very well. So the idea is that after coaching like 400 sessions this year, I noticed that a lot of my jungle students, right, they lose a lot of free kills just because of not doing the correct thing in the ganks, okay? So we're going to divide it into a couple of stages here. And the reason today I don't have a presentation and instead I have like the map, interactive map, is because I figured that it would be better. Um, but I want to talk about the first thing about ganking, which is going to be uh, the, the thing that people ask me the most often is like, how do I know whether I should gank or farm? How much should I farm? How much should I gank? And the other question they always ask me is like, what lane do I gank? So all of these questions fall under the first step of ganking, which is going to be the decision, okay? Decision. Part of ganking, okay? So the first thing you should know about ganking is that it's a trade-off. Because, yeah, you are going to potentially get something but you lose something in exchange. And your job when ganking is that whatever you lose is worth it compared to what you and your team win. Not only you, but your team as well, okay? So what do you lose when ganking? Can anyone tell me? You can use the bootcamp chat Tempo or on. unmute. Yeah, so you lose... Tempo and you're clear. Right, so basically XP and farm in the jungle, right? So you lose, like, clear or whatever. But there's another thing that you lose, or that is bad when you gank a lane. What is it? Is it pressure? No, it's information, okay? So you give the enemies information about you. So if you gank top lane, the bot lane will know what you're doing, therefore they can do stuff that otherwise they wouldn't do. I guess you could call it pressure, but it's mostly information, okay? So information is as much of a resource as XP and gold is. In fact, if you ask me what's the main difference between Halo and Low Elo junglers, is that in Low Elo nobody even thinks about the concept of information, which is junglers will show around sides of the map that they sh they shouldn't even show, 
that will give the enemy information and the enemies can do stuff because of that. I don't know if the student, I don't think the student is here, but he had a student once that solo lost the game in level 3 because he did this. He came, he was like clearing, he was topside, right? And he saw the enemy jungle start the Baldwin Scuttle. And instead of just, I think it was the Baldwin Scuttle, I think, no, I, maybe he saw it ganking Baldwin, something like that. He saw it bot side, right? It was minute 3 something. And instead of just going to a scuttle crab or going to a, the cracks or ganking top lane, what he did was he hit the vision cone here. Why is hitting the vision cone totally useless here? Because he knows the jungle is bot side, so what does he even want to see? Oh, I want to check whether the grump is up. You don't need to. Just by looking at the tab and looking at the jungle CS and the buff and the level, you know if you did grump or not. The difference is, by hitting this, you are given the mid lane and the top lane information that you are here. So I remember clearly that after he hit this, the enemy team pinged like missing pings here, like saying the jungle is here. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but I, I think they, he lost a lot of value from it. Like he, the enemy bot lane went in 3 2, and then the guy that was top lane st stopped pushing and he didn't get ganked. And like it was a tragedy, right? Just because of giving the enemy information. So there's a fine balance in ganking because you're gonna gank in such a way that you are getting more value from the gank than the information and XP and gold that you're losing from uh, not being in the jungle, okay? Whenever you're hidden in the jungle, you're not giving the enemy information and you're not giving up a lot of farm and XP. Is that clear? Information is equally as valuable, okay? It's not like less valuable than the clear. This is why it matters so much that you actually play thinking about the point of view of the enemy in your mind, okay? So, um, I have my notes here, okay. So the first thing we gotta do to decide what lane we're gonna gank and whether we're gonna gank or not in the first place to make the decision of ganking is getting information, okay, about where we can gank or not. So this is where the camera will come into play. I mentioned this pretty much every bootcamp because it is the most important thing ever. Okay. So how are you going to do this? I'm going to tell you what low elo junglers do and what high elo junglers do. A low elo jungler will clear this whole... Let's say that he starts topside, right? He starts top, he clears this, 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 blah, 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 comes spot. Clears this, clears this. Then the low elo jungler comes here, stands in this bush. When he's here, he has the, lock, the camera locked on himself. He stands in this bush, and when he's here, the camera finally sees this. Then he notices that the gank is not possible. Maybe the bot lane is like full HP and they don't have setup. Then he comes back and clears this. Why is this so, 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 so bad? Because he could have just kept clearing and moving the camera while he was doing either red or grump, or sorry, cracks. He could have moved the camera at the same time as doing it, okay? And he wouldn't have lost all the time he lost by going here. So I have students all the way up to Diamond. I think even you, Orc, have done it once. Like, even my students in Diamond, in, in Platinum, everyone does this. Where it's like, instead of just moving the camera while farming the jungle and then assessing whether you can gank or not, they will, like, finish the clear. They will do this. They will, like, clear and then look for a gank, right? And this, oh, look, this is super bad, okay? Instead, what you want to do is clear while looking for ganks, okay? In other words, if you're here, you should already have a decision about whether or not you can gank. You should never come to, like, the lanes without having a clear decision about whether a gank is possible or not. You should notice that, you should know that beforehand. And how do you do that? By moving the camera. It's impossible to know that without moving the camera, okay? Because if you are farming the jungle and you tell me, well, but I look at the map, that's not enough, okay? Things that the map doesn't tell you is like HP, cooldown, mana, wave state, HP of the minion, uh, wave state, summoner, summoners that the enemies might have used. Uh, it will not tell you what else. It doesn't tell you the levels, the experience. It just doesn't tell you a lane state at all. Like, just by looking at the map, do you know whether... Anivia has egg. Do you know whether the LeBlanc used W or has the passive? Do you know whether somebody is gonna push or not? You don't know because you don't know the HP of the current minion wave. Okay? You don't know the HP of the enemy. So this is super important. 
So this is why it's so wrong to like farm and then look for ganks. That's not how it works. You look for ganks while farming. Okay, you look for ganks while farming, always. So the secret behind this is what you're gonna do from now on is you're gonna move your camera when your spells are on cooldown in two moments. When your spells are on cooldown, and so your champion is just auto attacking the jungle camp, you don't need to do anything, you just move the camera. And when you are walking between jungle camps, okay? These are the two moments in which you're gonna move the camera. So if I'm gonna make like a blue thing here, which means move the camera, it's like you're gonna move the camera here, here, and here, right? And then you're also gonna move the camera when you're doing this and you have no cooldowns up anymore. So basically, if you are playing like, let's say, let's think of a champion like Nocturne, right? So you're gonna like Q and uh, maybe use the passive to make sure you hit every every jungle minion and then you just move the camera. Your champion is gonna be out attacking, you don't need to do anything. Even champions that use a lot of spells when clearing, like, I don't know, Karthus or Lilia, you can still move the camera between the, the spells, okay? It doesn't take much. This is what F keys are for. So this is how you make decisions about when to gank and where to gank. Because a lot of players don't understand that you actually know whether you should gank or not. It's just that you remove the camera so you don't know in the moment. Okay? Most of my students, they actually know if they should gank a lane if you actually show them the lane. It's just that they never look at it in the first place. Okay? So if this is clear, I'm gonna like make a quick... A uh, showcase of how this should look like. So give me one. Wait, what? So I can't log in, I guess. Uh, one second, please. That's weird. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go into a custom game with bots, and I'm gonna show you how much you can move the camera without even losing any kind of value at all. Okay. This is gonna be night and day when you start doing it. Okay, because. Nobody here is thumb. You actually know if a lane is 1 HP that you can gank it. But if you never check, then it's going to be really, really hard. So this is what I want to show you. First of all, let me show you a clip. Let me show you what happens if you just rely on the map and not move the camera. Most of you have probably already seen this clip before. If you are familiar with my channel. But this is exactly how... I show you something really, really... This is a gold player, I think. And you will see how when... You remove the camera and you just rely on the map, something looks fine, but then when you look at the camera, it looks the complete opposite, right? So I have shown this before to some people, I will show it again. When I make this point, it's about ganking. So this someone was counter jungling, he saw the top side. So he got into the enemy um uh, cracks because he's counter jungling. And I wanna show you a couple mistakes already that he's making. So he's counter jungling, and if you look at the map, it looks like a good counter jungle, right? Like mid lane is fighting, Udir is top. Uh, he saw it like five seconds ago in top lane. And his own bot lane has prior, so perfect, right? Perfect counter jungle. If you ask me, should he gank or counter jungle? Just based on the map, he should counter jungle, right? This is the correct choice. Let's see a couple of things here. First of all, he saw Udir here. If he only moved the camera towards Udir, he would have seen Udir has red buff, okay? He didn't move the camera towards Udir, and therefore he wastes 1Q in the red buff, where if he just moved the camera, he would have seen Udir has red buff, okay? Second of all, I'm gonna now, I'm gonna now move the camera, and I'm gonna ask you guys if this is actually a good gank, a good counter jungle, or he should actually be ganking. Now let's move the camera. What do you think now? Now it looks different, right? When we move the camera, we notice something, right? He should have dived this. This was a free tower dive. This is a Yumi with no mana, with a Kai'Sa with no flash and 1 HP. The minion wave is far away, and this minion wave will crash, and it's a free tower dive, okay? So this is what happens when you don't move the camera. Here. So, this happens a lot in your games, and the only reason you don't notice is because you never move it in the first place to notice that that's a possibility. I'm gonna show you how you look for ganks while farming. Okay, one second, I'm gonna create a custom game for this. So the way this is gonna work, okay, is I'm gonna add bots, random bots, so I can actually move the camera to them. Are adding bots to simulate my solo queue teammates. 
So I'm gonna pick like a random jungler, right? I'm gonna like which one should I pick? Listen. Just to show you that you can do it even with champions that move the camera that that like um have a lot of spells, okay. Your will, my hands. <clears throat> So this is be is this gonna be how you look for ganks while actually farming the jungle? Okay, really important. So from now on, in your soul games, never again farm and only farm and then look for ganks after farming. That's not how you do it. You're gonna waste so much time. And remember, jungling is like speed running. Every single second counts. By doing things like I told you, like just clearing and then looking for the gank, you're gonna like lose a solid Solid what? Like a solid 20, 25, 30 seconds. That's huge, okay? Every single second counts. I'm gonna go to upside because I don't even have a leash with uh, bots, but it's whatever. I'm gonna level up W just to make it safer. So while we wait for the... This is a custom game, but I'm gonna show you how this works, okay? So for those of you who don't know, in a normal rank game, you will have... Like, the order is gonna be like top lane in the... In the top, you're gonna have mid lane in the middle, and then the bot lane there. So the way this works is, if you go to your F keys, they're gonna go in this order. So F1 is top, okay? Like that. So F1, F2, F3. So the thing is, by default, okay? You're gonna change the setting here, because by default, in camera control, select self is gonna actually F1. This is how it comes by default, F1 here. This is really bad because F1 is gonna do the same as space fire. It's Minions like meaningless. So what most people do, because by default this is how it looks like, okay? And it's really awkward because the last ally, you have to go all the way to F5 to press it. And it's like really far away. So instead what I do, like this, I remove mine and then F1 through F4 here. So now you only have to F4. Um, so basically like that. Now, in level 1, usually you don't want to look at, at the lanes too much. I mean, you don't need to, but you can just start doing it. So there I press W. And now, while I'm pressing W, you see, I don't need to press anything else, right? Yeah, and it's quite easy, because you just wait until your cooldowns, your spells are on cooldown, right? <clears throat> now it's on cooldown, and I can just look around. Well, it's cool, and I can use some mouse, I can use my F keys. And you don't really lose much. Right. And now I'm looking for ganks, see? It's not like listing will gank level 2, but it's a just really good thing to know like the state of the lanes to say what you're gonna do. You you see who has prior as well. So see when I move between jungle camps, I don't look at my own champion. Okay. So you gotta get in this habit, okay? It's moving the camera a lot. So right now I'm moving, so I, I don't have anything, any reason to look at my own champion when I'm moving like that through the jungle. And as you can see, now I went back to looking at the jungle. Oops. One neat trick that you can do with this scene is that you can actually I think this works. You clear everything at once. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. And as you can see, I'm already looking for ganks. So let's stop this guy from hitting me. I'm already looking for the bottling gank or the midling gank at the same time as I'm farming the jungle camp, right? So now I will already know whether I will go or not after red buff. I already know whether a gank is possible or not. So for example, right now, if this was a real game, this was a possible gank. And I don't have to go all the way here, okay? And I don't lose anything, like my clear was just the same speed as if I wasn't moving the camera. Really, really, really important, okay? F keys and uh, space for then to center it back on your champion. Next, that's the decision part of ranking. Um, well, that's the basics of how to make the decision of ganking. Then we have another thing about the decision of ganking that is going to be this, the champion select checklist that I call it. So this is going to be two things. Where's my pen? Here's my pen. Not the best penmanship. It's going to be the strong 
and weak side what we call strong and weak side in the early game and what we call the setup so this is how you're gonna decide what lane to path towards early and what lane to gank early so who here can tell me what this means like strong side weak side and the pathing the the sorry the setup <clears throat> so you can write in the bootcamp chat or this same chat i just noticed that we have a chat in the event i didn't check it so so sorry i will check it now after this but if anyone can tell me what i mean here that um, is, yeah go ahead Jetstream said in the chat, setup as if lanes can help execute the gank and uh, uh, expand on that. CC, high damage, um, or mobility to get on the target faster, keep the target in place. Right, perfect. So we're going to divide into two things first. So let's talk about strong side and weak side, and then we will talk about setup. So strong side and weak side is what lane you're going to be ganking more often, and weak side is what lane you're going to be ganking less often. Usually, two things will determine who is strong side and weak side. One is the the strong side is the lane that, with your gold and with your carry potential, okay, with your with your attention, it will be a lane that can carry the game. So I will explain that uh, when I talk about the setup, I will explain that question, uh, MKK. But first, I want to talk about strong side and weak side. I want to show you a game in my recent match history, okay? This is in 800 LP, as you can see. And there was a game that I played recently. So this one. I had 23 kills on Kai'Sa. But I want you to see something. My queen had 0-11 KD. And I want to show you why we won this game. And that is, there was a clear strong and weak side in this game. The enemy Vi decided to strong side their, their top lane, okay? Their cliff. This is because traditionally the Zeri and the Janna have no setup, meaning they have no CC for the gang, no reliable way of helping the gang. However, this is not the only thing that should decide what lane you camp. This is Vice Mistake here. Vice Mistake is a typical master to low grandmaster mistake, which is they know what lane has the setup and they gank that lane. But what they don't know is what lane should be strong side and weak side, because that is not the same thing. So I'm going to explain. What lane has the setup? The lane that has the setup will determine what lane you gank early in the first or second clears, okay? And the lane that has the strong side and weak side, okay? So the lane that has the... I'm going to move this to here. There we go. The lane that has the strong side will determine what you gank or the whole course of the game, so like later. So after let's let's call it after resets, okay? So after resets. So the lane that you're gonna focus on the most. So why? Because early game you just wanna gank a lane that has setup because none of you have a lot of damage. So it's like the lane that you wanna get like the free four hundred gold, right? But later the gold is not what matters. Later, you want to gank and camp the lane that can translate a gold lead into a victory. So tell me something, guys. Who here in the enemy team you think could translate a huge gold lead into a victory 1v9? And traditionally, it <coughs> doesn't matter here, so you would only talk about top and bottom. I think uh, Zeri has good carry potential. Yeah, exactly. Zeri. Zeri is the 1v9 champion in their team, right? Vagar doesn't need kills to carry. He just has a setup tool, plus Everfrost, plus farming with Q. So he doesn't... And, and by the way, they're not going to kill a Vladimir, right? He will just pull away. So, basically, what Vi failed to notice is that Kled had the setup for the early game, and she should have ganked Kled early, but only early. Why? Because Kled is like the fucking worst champion in the game. Like, Kled will never carry a game by having 5 kills, okay? This Kled, I think, was like 5 and 0 at one point. But Kled doesn't carry games like that. He just doesn't. That's not how Kled works. So basically, you wanna gank the lane that has set up early, and you wanna gank the lane that has the 1v9 carry potential with gold, after the early, after the first or second regal. Still in the early, but after the first or second regal. So what Vi should have done is like, 
gang cleared in the first clear, path towards top and gang cleared. But then after a first or three gone reset, gang Zeri and get the Drake. That's what she should have done, but she didn't. If you see this replay, she was always perma gang in top lane. And this is what lost her the game. I wanna show you. Should have ganked me more, in other words. So I think Vayar was challenger and the other were Grandmaster. But you will see how. Um, yeah, so Queen dies level 1 to a cheese there, and then it begins, right? Vice dies, starts ganking her so much. Gank and kill, gank and kill, gank and kill. So she keeps doing this. Too. 25. Again. Minute 6. Again. Minute 8. Again. Okay. And you know what the issue with this is? Look at her, sorry. And look at me. And Kled is never gonna carry a game by being strong, say. That's the issue. Now, if Kled was Jax, if Kled was Fiora, if Kled was uh, any other champion like that, like hard to carry top laner. This would have been a different story. I think I would have maybe lost this game, okay? But Kled is Kled. Kled doesn't carry like this. So don't be this vi, okay? Never gank. Never, like, camp a lane that is supposed to not be a strong side lane. Kled is not a strong side lane. Kled is a setup lane. Setup lanes, you gank when it's early game and when there's a free gank and there are no objectives. But right now, look at this. I'm literally pinging the Drake. Do you see that on my way ping? I'm pinging the drake and we're gonna get free drakes, we get free gold, free stuff here and see Evelyn is ganking bot lane or at least being bot side and I am the the strong side um, lane because compared to queen I do so much more with the cryo and the gold queen is supposed to be one of those like be left alone and punish 1v1 right in fact she roams a lot she's not supposed to get ganked by in her lane okay so I think this is something that you should keep in mind for the future always. The same goes, for example, if the enemy top lane is like a Scion, Orn, things like that, you don't want to spam gank them. Because no matter how many times you kill them, a Scion will take your tower anyway. No matter how, how many times you gank, um, for example, uh, an Orn, Orn ultimate is going to be the same ultimate where he's 0-10 or 10-0. and zero. Might do a little bit more damage, but that's it, it's the same ultimate, okay? So you don't want to gank the lane that is not supposed to be strong side. Learn your strong sides. Learn which champions are going to be the ones that can carry you 1v9 if you feed them. So the Ceres, the, the Kog'Maws, okay? The, the Vladimir's, things like this. Um, the, If it's top lane, you have some, by the way. The Jax and Fiora, I think, are the most perfect examples of this in the top lane. But usually in lower elo, nobody plays Jax and Fiora that well. So in lower elo, it's very hard to find a top lane that is uh, uh, an actual 1v9 top lane. Darius... I think you should only gank Darius once or twice and getting one or two kills. And after that, he can like 1v2 the lane alone against the enemy jungle. And you can take Drakes for free. So I think... Unless you're like Master Blast, I don't think you need to spam gank top lane in any games. I think top lane is the, gang, the, the lane that you gank once or twice early and you give them like that lead that then makes them a monster and the enemy top lane cannot play 1v1, so you don't need to gank more. And the drakes are bottom, drakes are OP guys, remember. Remember guys, drake win rate, okay? Soul win rate, 91% win rate on the drake soul in silver, go to platinum, 92%. 90% on the others. So that's where bot lane is, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, can we ask questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what? Uh, like, you got an early lead as the ADC, right? Yeah, in this game. And you. you... Yes, yes. In yeah. the game where they perma spammed top lane ganks. Yeah. Like, uh,. You got an early lead, so and you said bot lane, the enemy bot lane doesn't have that much setup potential. Yeah. So if you already got fed, how could Y impact bot lane? In which way? Because I'm perma playing aggressive and diving them. That's the thing. So in this gank, you don't see this as much, but I, I'm going to show you. It's going to be very obvious when I show you what happened. I think it was here. That's a bit sooner, actually. Yeah, so look at this. Look at what I'm doing here. 
If I was here instead of going topside, like why is she even topside? Look at this. Her camps are down. Both both side camps are up. So she should be both side. She's only going top to kill keep killing a queen that is 0-2 already. It's gonna give her like 200 gold and she's gonna lose all the bot side plus this too. If she was here, she would have won the game because I wouldn't have done this too. I killed the Seri under tower. And now I go even more aggressive and I kill the Chan under tower as well. Imagine if Bai was here. Right? Look at this. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really good example. Yeah. And she has nothing to do here, no camps. She just went up to kill the queen again. Let's see what she got from killing this queen. I think she killed her again. Yeah. Let's see how much gold she got from this. She got 220, like I told you, I said 200. The click got 110. I got 600 plus the whole wave crash under tower. Plus, now her clear is fucked because not only this, but how can you ever be behind in CS against an Evelyn, right? That's illegal. That only happens because she's not even clearing because she's ganking top. The thing is, this 200 gold on her and 100 gold on Kled doesn't do anything because Kled doesn't carry with gold. That's just not how it works. Let's say that this Kled is 10 and 0 and ult somewhere. What is the ult going to do if all the teammates are like this? Nobody can follow his ult. Okay. So this is by not understanding that she should never gank topside like this. She should be bot side. Because Seri is the champion that carries with gold. So it's by the way, I think it's completely correct that she ganked topside here in minute three. Because this is different. This is like the first kill. Queen still gives a lot of gold because she's not uh zero, zero 02 or zero 03 yet. And there's nothing to do bot side yet. And it's fine. Like the first gank, this is the setup, it's good. Kled has ignite and flash. Like in the first gank you go towards the lane that has a setup. That is good. So with Darius as well, you gank Darius. The one, the two, level three. Very good. But after that, you go to a strong side, okay? Okay, so let's go in, um, seeing the lane state while moving the camera. What I wanted to mention is, you want to look for, when you're farming and you're moving the camera, you want to look for, like, the HPs that people have, but also you want to look for the state of the wave. So basically, it's really easy, guys. Just look at the HP of the minions. Overall, the, the rule of thumb is, like, don't look at how many minions each side has, but how many total HP of minions each side has. So, for example, right? Then the most common example is, like, yeah, if they have... If I have one... Like, I don't know. I have two melees, and they have three casters, but the three casters are, like, half HP, I'm gonna push anyway, right? So, basically, look at the overall HP of the minion wave to say what lane is gonna push towards which one. And essentially, even if... So let's say that you are blue side here, even if the lane is going to be really pushed and you're going to do anything, so you're blue side and the lane is like really pushed here, at least move the camera and identify, don't do this thing, right? A lot of lower elo junglers, what they do is like, they look at the map, they see the wave is pushed, and they go like, okay, it's impossible, the wave is pushed, and they don't even move the camera. Move it, because you might get a tower dive one time out of three. You might get see that the enemies are low HP and you can go behind them tower dive. This is so important, okay? The reason people in lower elo don't tower dive is because they don't move the camera when the wave is crashed under the tower. And they don't notice that people are low HP under tower, okay? When that happens, it's really important. So, let's go into executing the gank, okay? Number one rule of executing ganks, guys. And this is one that maybe will surprise you. Please spam ping, okay? Literally spam it so much. The on my way ping, so the one that is like like this. Whenever you're going for a gank, spam ping the on my way ping on the lane when you're close to it. So basically, the way I do it, let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna gank mid lane. I'm here. I ping mid lane on my way once, and then I ping it like three or four times when I'm here. Because if I ping it three times when I'm here, the guy's gonna think that he has to go in now, and he will go in now and waste it. So basically, you ping once when you're here, and then when you're like here, you ping like three or four times. I actually ping it until I get muted by the like automatic mute thing. If you spectate a challenger Korean game and download the vote, what you will see is that it literally defends you how many pings they use. It's like kind of annoying actually, like so many pings. If you download an NA gold or platinum game and watch the vote, there's not a single ping or there are very rarely any pings. 
Why is this? Because the game needs communication, but the game doesn't have voice chat. So we use pings as a way of voice chatting. We even use them to flame, don't we? So it is like the voice chat of League. So you gotta ping when you gank, it's so important. As well as when you wanna do drakes and baron, another key mistake that I see that I see like lower low junglers do is that when they wanna do drake or they wanna do baron, they don't ping on my way like crazy. Please do it, I promise you it will be night and day. Just literally spam ping on my way. Every time you wanna go for a gank, drake, objective, just spam it. Okay, next, executing a gank. So I want to talk about something that I think I mentioned it here to some people, especially Orc, because... So Orc, do you want to tell us your experience with our coaching first, so they understand? Um, like what you met which, me at, Which what, aspect at, of it? Like you met me at Warilo and what happened and all that. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I was pretty washed for like two, three years, wasn't doing well at all. I bought coach, coaching around Gold 1 from Sag. And, um, you know, within like a month after that coaching, I was diamond and then got another two sessions. And after that, I hit masters. Yeah. So now he's like master 100, 200 LB or so. He played a lot of Volibear and uh, he likes Volibear. Oh, Volibear. He likes Volibear. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, who is Orc? Well, he likes Volibear. That's pretty much it. But one of the main things I taught him that he, even when he got to diamond. So this was how it worked. I saw him playing Diamond 4 and I told him, dude, I think you should keep going. And he was like, but I don't think I, like, I think this is my limit. And I was like, no, 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 you can't keep going, actually. But one of the main tips that got him from Diamond to Master was the gank approach thing, wasn't it? Like, when I told you how you approach the ganks, remember? Like, the path. Yeah, it was, gank. um, yeah, it was, like, mostly that I should be looking for a lot of, um, a lot of early aggression. And then, like, when I'm doing that, I need to do it properly. I mean, I need I, to I mean like when you approach be behind the target. Exactly, yes. That's what yeah. I mean. Exactly, yes. So this is what I'm going to call jungle gap. Okay. And gap will mean gank approach. That's a P. Gank approach pathing. Okay. So what this means is the number one mistake you're going to do if you're below master because Orc did this mistake and he was diamond. So everyone does it below master. And in fact, I think the last session we had, he was like master 70 LP or something. And he still did this mistake. I remember once. With Oliver, I remember there was a play here that you did that mistake. So the mistake is that people don't know how to input, okay, how to input right clicks. This is so important, right clicks when ganking. So what do I mean here? Basically, whenever you go for a gank, there are a couple of laws that you're going to look out for. So first of all, let's see if I can switch to this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. Can I zoom here? Okay. How do you... Okay. So let's say that you want to gank bot lane. So let's say that you are... Where's the blue side jungler? I'm here, blue side jungler. So let's say that you want to gank bot lane, okay? It's the first time I'm using this tool, but it seems pretty useful. So let's say that they are kind of pushed. Okay. And you're the blue side jungler. So what people will do a lot in low and it's super bad, is that... When they are, first of all, they will come this way. So this is already bad. Why? Because when you gank somewhere, the first thing you gotta do is care about, I mentioned this in the last session, the PTS, right? The path to safety. So think about this. Whenever you gank someone or you chase someone, what is their safety point that they wanna run towards? Okay? So that's gonna be here, right? Safety point. Right? The, these guys are gonna go this direction. So far so good, right? So therefore, what's their path to safety? By the way, sometimes if you gank, let's say that you gank through the lane, sometimes their safety will be like up here. Or if there's a fresh lantern, or there's the enemy jungle coming. So it's not always the tower. So first thing you gotta do is always think about the path to safety. So if this is the path to safety, your job as a jungler, okay? And let's make two of them actually, because there's two people gonna be intercepting the pts that's what you gotta always do intercept the pts the path to safety so how do you do this from now on you're never again gonna go towards the current enemy position so low low junglers will do this that is the worst thing you can ever do first of all you want to intercept the pts because think of it this way if you intercept it and you're here the only way the only way they can get to safety is by walking through you. 
So instead of you going to them, you force them to go to you. That's so much better. So, so much better. Many reasons why. One, you can begin auto-attacking sooner when they're here. Second, they gotta go through you and you can auto-attack, auto-attack, auto-attack. Like, you're gonna auto-attack so much more times. And third of all, you don't need gap closers. You can save your gap closer to when they actually run through you and they are here. And now you got close. The first session I had with Orc, this is the number one mistake he did. He was gold 1 or, or platinum 4 with Saint Zhao. And he ganked bot lane, I think. Or maybe it was the diamond session, actually. He ganked bot lane and he like instantly... He passed towards the enemy instead of in front of them. And he instantly used the Saint Zhao knockup. Instead of like waiting. Or I mean, not the knockup, the, the dash. It's the E, right? Yeah, the E. I think I have it here, look guys. I think I have a video called Orc here. Big clip, yeah, big is you, right? <laughs> so look at this, this is him when we had our diamonds. So this, this is Orc, this is his account. This session was back when he was diamond, I think. And... See where he's passing? Look at the clicks. Do you see the click? This is super bad, okay? Why? Because by the time he gets there, Caitlyn will be here. So what's the point of passing that way? He should just path in such a way that he cuts the Caitlyn's way out. And not only that, he has red buff. So just wait around this area and out attack the Caitlyn. And only when she either flashes or E's away, then you can match that with the Xinjiao E, right? And in the meantime, you can like W, you can Q, right? So what the perfect Xinjiao play here would have been like, Come here, out attack, then reset with Q, apply the two Qs with red buff, and then when she flashes, you match that, or, or E is away, you match that with the E plus the knockout from the third Q. But look at what he did. So first of all, you saw the pathing, see? He's pathing towards her. This is already bad, he should be pathing here. But see, that's the huge mistake. Do you remember this? Work? This, this was like back in April, I think. It was so long ago. I don't like remembering this. This is embarrassing. <laughs> right, but this, this E, this E, he literally fixed this and got to master. Okay, it's that that important, like because this was the last session we got before he got to master. This was back in time. So this E, it's so bad. Do you see, guys, why this E is so bad? Because the only reason he needs to E is because of bad pathing. Because if he passed this way, he would have been here already without the E, and then he has red buff and he can out attack, out attack Q. And then when Caitlyn flashes or Q is away, he can match with A finally for the knockup. But now look, he has no more dashes. And instead of being in front of Caitlyn, he's behind her or to the side where he could have been in front in the first place. And now, see, he's behind the Caitlyn. Notice how when Caitlyn flashed, she was already in front of him. So you want to never do As a jungler with red buff, you should always be in front of the enemy. And now Caitlyn flash. How do you match that? Well, he has to flash to match it. See? So he literally wasted flash and misses this kill on bar because if he had still the flash and the Q and the W, maybe he could have killed that as well. But he wasted flash just because of bad right clicks. Okay? Bad pathing and bad right clicks. Had he passed in front of Caitlyn in the first place and saved the E, this would have never happened. Okay? It is so important that he have it saved in my collection of this. Older here is a collection of my students making this mistake over and over. Wanna see one one more? I wanna show you one more. Look at this. Look at these graves. So they say it's kinda of dancing around the yawn, whatever. But look at the graves. See where he's passing? He's passing towards where the stead almost currently is. Like, think about it this way. By the time he gets here, that will be like here, won't he? So he's guaranteed to be behind the set. And he has red buff and dash, by the way. And set doesn't have stuff. So why not path this direction and cut set's way out in such a way that he can only keep passing upwards or like even cut him out and then smoke screen and things like that. But no, he goes towards him and uses the E. This is super bad. Because he used the E in the direction set currently is. So all set has to do here is keep walking and he will run away. And, and he also used the smoke screen. Look. He's casting the W right now. This is ultra bad. Because he should have waited until Zed uses the shadow to then the W. The press play. There. I paused here. So 
Is this a hold play? Let me show the hold play because better. Okay, so see, and he uses the, the smoke screen too early. And because of using the smoke screen too early, and the dash too early, and pathing wrong, so this right click is the issue, okay? I promise you guys, nobody in Challenger is gonna path like this. Nobody's gonna click here. This is just losing so much distance. By clicking here, what you're doing is like, is my speed 340? Well, if I click here, my speed is gonna be 2080. 280, sorry. And my AD is gonna be 40 instead of 80. Why? Because you're losing so much damage and speed by pathing incorrectly that your champion might as well have an exhaust on him, right? But see, picture a world in which he pathed in this direction in the first place, and he saved the E and then W here. Okay? And then you might think, okay, but Zed can walk this iteration. Yeah, but he can also apply the red buff, one out attack here, and then Zed can run away anymore, he dies, okay? So this was a free kill that he didn't get just because of bad pathing and right clicks. So what's our rule here? If we have the enemy path to safety, okay, which is like this. First of all, you gotta intercept it as far ahead as you can. So, like this, okay? So this is wrong. Never do that. So you hug the opposite wall and you intercept it and you save your gap closer okay why do you save your gap closer because you don't need it because if you position well enough the enemy is gonna close the gap for you you don't have to do that yourself okay and then the other really bad thing that a lot of lower elo people do is that they will use the gap closer like some lower elo people what they do and this is also something you gotta avoid is if you actually manage to reach this point and intercept them let's say you actually intercept them bring our friendly jungler here so you intercept them now right let's say you intercept one thing you gotta always avoid so let's say it there okay never you stick up closer like this so let's say you're Kane and you actually manage to intercept them here and you like eat in the wall and whatever then low willow canes would queue like this this is super bad, because again, they were gonna come to you, you don't need the gap closer, you can just out attack and W, and then when they finally walk over you, you can Q in this direction. So the, the rule here is never, okay, never gap close in the opposite direction of the path to safety, okay? If this is the enemy path to safety, you are never ever, like, well, maybe if they're 1 HP or something, there's, like, exceptions, I guess, but almost never you're gonna gap close in the direction opposite to a path to safety. Because if you're doing that, you're essentially doing the opposite of a gap closing, right? What you're doing is that in the future, this will happen, and you gap enlargement, I guess, instead of gap closing, right? Your gap closer did the opposite of closing the gap. It's like you gave the enemy a free thresh lantern or something. You switch places. So in the session with with uh, Big here with a Xinjiao, if you remember, so he was ganking bot lane, and if he was ganking bot lane, he was red side, right? So let's bring our red side jungler here, so the blue side goes away. So he was ganking bot lane like this, and what he did, so this was the position more or less. What he did was he used the E in this direction. Notice how this is kind of opposite to the Caitlyn Spice Path to Safety, which was this. And that's the thing, if he's using the E in this direction, it means that he could have gotten her by just walking and intercepting, right? And then he could have saved the E for when they actually go in that direction. This is such a big issue and mistake that I'm actually... This whole folder is all clips and me talking about this mistake. The the, the gank approach pathing and how people right click incorrectly when going for ganks. Literally so important, okay? I even have clips of Agrin, which was the rank one in the West and he's a jungler. I have a clip of him doing it and dying because of doing it wrong. And then a clip of him doing the exact same thing but surviving and killing the Aurelia, an enemy Aurelia. So I, I analyze this a lot and it's like something that people don't even think about consciously. This guy is rank one in the West and he died because of not thinking about it consciously, okay? Um, I'm going to show you another example, so for example, maybe this tune is here, I don't remember uh, who this is in Discord, but 
But look at this. This is the same graves and it's the same mistake. Look. So Thresh is 1 HP. Uh, not Thresh. Dead. I don't know why it said Thresh. So this 1 HP. So right now, think guys. What is the Zed's path to safety, okay? Path to safety will be the, the tower here to the right and the Zack. So he wants to go to a tower and to a Zack, right? But look at where Graves is clicking. There's no shot that the Zed will be there. And even if he's there, it would mean that he's dead. That's the thing that you would understand, guys. It's about making checkmates. If the Zed walked in this direction, he would be dead already. There's no way he could survive. That's the tower. There are no minions. Like, he's dead. The only way the Zed can survive is walking in this direction. So you'll think about that path to safety. The path to safety of, of the Zed is like either like here or like here. And what's more, you already have a Yon that can check that bush for you. So why not wait in the intercepting the path to safety? This is the path to safety. You want to intercept it. But instead, and remember the other thing that I said? What's the rule? Never use gap closers in the direction opposite to the enemy path to safety. So what did Graves do? He used the E in the direction opposite to the path to safety, meaning into the bush. So when that happens... Uh, So he uses the E, oh I think he doesn't use the E, I think he just walks into it, yeah, see? And it's too late now because he didn't intercept, and now Zed can just shadow here, and even with the Graves it's gonna be too late. Why? Because he should have never gone into the bush, he should have intercepted and waited in the path to safety. This is the same mistake Jinjao Orc was doing, okay? The same mistake. See? Too late. This should have been a free kill and it wasn't just because of that, okay? You see how many free kills you guys are losing because of this. Even Platinum Diamond players. Hell, even Agor in rank 1 US, I saw him do this once and I saved it here. But I don't want to spoil it because this is actually a video that I'm going to do. <laughs> That's why it has a lot of uh, like uh, content and stuff ready for it. Um, okay. So now, that's the execution part, okay? Always... So it's basic rules, okay? Think about the enemy path to safety, save your save your gap closers if you don't need them. Also save your gap closers to match the enemy gap closers, right? For example, the graves shouldn't have used D uh, after until the Z uses E in the mid lane gank, remember? Same as Jinjao here shouldn't have used D until after Gatlin flashes or dashes away. You save your gap closers to match the enemies. You stay always in front of them. And a rule that I forget to mention is never, okay? They never input on a target that is out of range, okay? So another huge issue that a lot of people will do is that let's say that you are the Xinjiao here, what they will do so in this clip Orc didn't do it, but I think in the last clip we had where he was playing in Master, he actually did this with Bolivar and he was the opposite gank, he was actually blue side Bolivar, I remember this clearly. And he was like here, ganking the enemy red side. And he actually went this way because he had like boots and the enemy lane didn't have boots and he had like Bolivar. You know how Bolivar runs celerity and he has like a gazillion speed, so he could go this way. But what he did is he actually clicked on the enemy ADC when he was approaching. And remember, Bolivar's melee, so his attack range is going to be this. But he clicked on the enemy ADC. And what happens is that when you click on someone that is out of your range, your champion stops moving as soon as it gets to them. You know what that means? It means you never get in front of them ever. It's impossible. So even though, it's really funny, because even though Orc here had like 410 speed or something, and the enemy Caitlyn had... She was even slowed by the E, I think. She had like something like 20, 270, I think, because she was slowed. Even though she had like almost double the speed of Caitlyn, he actually never got in front of her. How's that possible? Like he had double the speed, never got in front of her. So why? Because he was clicking on her. So when you click on someone, you don't walk in front of them. Instead, he should have been clicking here. So pay attention anytime you watch a challenger jungler. Play Graves, play Udir, play Udir, um, Bolivar, play any kind of auto attack based jungler. Notice how they click on the ground right in front of the enemy as much as possible and only click on the enemy one time per each auto attack. 
Only each time the auto attack is ready. Okay. So this is so important, okay? Never input on the enemy out of range. You're gonna miss out on so many kills in ganks if you do that. So many. I've seen it happen. It's gonna happen to you. So, with that said, I'm gonna mention two things. So we're finishing the formal part of the session. So I'm gonna... Whoever wants to stay <coughs> for the clip reviews that I got sent, you can do that. But before that, I wanna mention the last part, which is the post gank. So, what should you do after a gank, guys? You can tell me. Push out the lane. Right. But sometimes, right? It depends on the lane state. So the first thing you should do is, like, check the lane state to notice whether you should push it or not. So a lot of Loilo junglers don't even check for lane states after ganking, so they don't, like, they don't know and they don't see whether they should push or not. So basically, when you gank a lane, especially early, what you gotta notice is you want to help the laner push if they need to crash it under the tower. So let's say that you're the volleyer that ganked here. You gank, blah, 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 you kill everyone. But let's say your ADC is like no mana and it's like a vein with zero wavelength. So you want to help her push before the enemy ADC comes back. So basically, you want to help them push if alone they wouldn't be able to crash the wave under the tower before the enemy comes back. That's the condition, okay? Pushing is a means to help them crash the wave under tower before the enemy comes back. If they can manage to crash the wave under tower before the enemy comes back alone, you don't need to help. But most of the time, especially when ganking top lane, because bot lane is two people up top lane, I don't think any top lane champions can actually crash the wave alone without your help early. Like, think about Nar, think about like Gar and Darius, like all of them need kind of help crashing it after the level 3 gank, right? So, first of all, check if your lane, um, if your laner needs help crashing the wave before the enemy comes back. That's the condition. The second one is you wanna look at the map, because we're gonna look at two things. Possible drakes, or like objectives in general, right? Or possible invades after killing people, because every time you gank a lane, even if, by the way, this is how you make ganks useful even without killing people. Let's say you gank botlin, but they don't die and they like run away with low health. This is still a free drake, okay? Enemy botlin is no summoners and no health. This is still a free drake. Or a free invade and blue up. So another thing that changes and, and is different between lower elo and higher elo junglers is that in low elo they will gank and then they will go back to a jungle and that's it, right? In Hailo, after ganks, you will look for stuff, right? Okay. So look for stuff around the map after the ganks. This is so important because usually, even if you don't kill the enemy, they will be low HP and low, low like uh, summoners, cooldowns, whatever. So it should be an objective, an invade, or even just a ward at least, you know. But look for that. So let's see who starts with Eclipse here. Do you guys have any more questions before we look at Eclipse? Uh, I have one that's a little bit, um, it's not exactly about ganking, but it's about uh, jungling in general and uh, oh. the information check. Um, so recently there's been a couple add-ons coming out, like uh, like the, the cursed ones essentially. Yeah, poor professor stuff like that. Yeah, that, uh, not that only is... them. yeah, but they're still legal for now. Um, for now, yeah. <laughs> so, and... They're legal on a lot of other servers that's not North America as well. I know that um, Europe West doesn't really give a shit, neither do Chinese servers or Korean servers. Um, and they're tracking summoner timers and sometimes even ultimate timers. Yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. something we should be using to plan ganks, or should we just avoid that and focus on our own knowledge? So I have never used those add-ons, and I think they are not good enough. They're not very good. So what I think is, like, they are training wheels. If you're a, Think about it this way. If you never um, used a bike in your life, training wheels are actually a good way of learning. So if you're a new player in League or if you're bronze, things like training wheels are a good thing. But if you are trying to get into the pro bike leagues or like you are a really nice, like a well seasoned biker, training wheels will handicap you. And that's exactly what I think of all this kind of software. Like, if you are good, 
they are actually gonna make you get bad habits, I think, and put you down. The same way, I think about the same thing. The same thing for like uh, the runes and automatic builds and runes thing in Professor and Blitz. It's like I recommend it to my students that are below gold or below platinum, but diamond master stuff, you should probably do everything yourself because that's the only way you can actually adapt. For the jungle timers thing, yeah, I think it kind of turns your brain off in some things, in my opinion. I think it's a good thing that they are going to remove it from the game. That's what I think. In fact, back in my day, I don't know if you guys knew this, back in my day, you mm. didn't know if the enemy jung if the enemy team took Baron or Drake, you didn't know until you went into the pit. You know how now when they take Baron, it makes a sound and it shows you the indicator that they got Baron? That wasn't a thing before, okay? If the enemy took Baron in the Fog of War, you didn't know until you checked it, just like Red Buff. Just like any jungle camp. Uh, honestly, I kind of prefer that, but... Yeah, but it was better. Right, does not like it. The same happened uh, with... You know how now, even if you don't have vision of the enemy blue buff, after you go into a blue buff pit, it will tell you when it spawns. In the past, it didn't work that way. If you didn't have vision on... on this, this is what happened with Baron and Drake as well. If you didn't have vision at the time that it died, you didn't know when it was going to spawn. So let's say that the enemy team took Drake out of your vision, like cleared your words and took Drake. You didn't know when it was going to spawn, ever. So that was kind of nice because it forced you to play more around vision. That's how it was before, but you are making me feel like a boomer. Um, someone asked me something in the beginning of the session and I didn't see a way. Initial gang went to farm, went to leap comes for a fight. So we went over that in the beginning, I think. So, Techno said 90% of the time you want to start weak side and pass to strong side. No, 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 no. You want to start in the lane with no setup and pass to or, towards the lane that has setup. Remember, setup is early game, strong side and weak side is after first and second regal, okay? Very important. Sometimes the lane with strong side is the same as the lane with uh, setup, but not always, right? Let me think about a lane that is strong side and setup at the same time. Well, Samira and Nautilus. Samira Nautilus is strong side and has the setup for the level 1 at the same time. But that's not the most common thing. In the example that I was showing you guys, uh, Leth has setup, but Zeri is strong side. The way you know, there's a really easy way you know if an ADC is strong side or not. You know how? If they have a support that will roam like crazy, that means that the ADC is weak side. So let me give you an example. Um, Tyr, Jin, and Ezreal. These three ADCs can play very easily and fine and safe even if the support roams. That means that they are left alone and they are weak side and the support roams to the strong side. Okay. So Ezreal is what people call the king of weak side bot lane. Okay? Strong side ADCs are like Samira, also has the setup. Ash as well. You're never gonna leave an Ash alone, right? She just dies. Um, and she has insane setup as well. So let's look at some clips. So who sent me clips? Let me close this. So let's start with. Who sent me clips? Who sent me clips? Let me pull it up. Red stream, you sent me something, didn't you? Are these full games or clips? Because uh, yeah, I sent I sent you some some of my gangs. They're they're just the just a, just the gang. Okay. Oh, end of inception there. So let's see. Are you listening? Oh uh, yeah yeah I am Lee. So this looks like a good setup for level 2 gang. So we have Janna with Glacial Omen. If she has Q, that's good setup. Plus a Tristana Jam. So first thing, you should never start this gang until the, lay, the wave crashes under tower. Because if you start the gang now, the minion wave will prevent you from hitting your Q. And they can dance around the minion wave and you take a lot of damage from the minion wave. Uh, and it's unnecessary. You just wait until the wave crashes and then you gank usually. Unless... If Tristana manages to jump like right now and, and Jenna knocks him up, that's still fine because you could land the Q from here while he's his seed and he cannot hide himself behind the minions. 
but I would probably, what I would do if I was you, I would like start walking this direction and wait here until the minion wave crashes and then you walk. Yeah, as you can see, this is really bad. Well, not not by you, I guess Janna trolled because she should have let the minion wave crash and she didn't, right? So guys, if you are ever this Janna, just stop it. Think about your life and do this. Um, let the minion wave crash, please. This is not a 3v2 like you think. This is a 3v3 because of the minion wave, okay? My prediction is that this Janna is going to probably blow up, maybe? Yep. Uh, Yeah, like I said, this is really hard because of the minion wave. Yep. So the only reason this gank didn't go 2 for 0 is because of the not letting the minion wave crash, okay? I see this a lot in lower elo. You gotta let the minion wave crash, always. You know when I see this a lot? Do you know why Ilawi and Darius are so broken in lower elo? Because they push early, and then the jungle comes and ganks them with all of the minion wave without letting the minion wave crash. When you don't let the minion wave crash, two things happen. One, the enemy is usually one level above because they have killed the minion wave and you haven't. This case was not it, but in top lane this happens a lot. And the other thing is that you get aggro from the minions and that's almost like a, a normal champion. Especially if you're playing like Elise, Lee Sin, you need a skill shot, right? If you're playing Kha'Zix, the enemy is never going to be isolated. They have the minion wave. So that's just not waiting for the minion wave to crash. That was really bad because of that reason. I think it's mostly Janna mistake. Lee Sing was kind of patient of her. Uh, I did ping her to go in, so that was kind of on me. Mm, yeah, so you gotta... I actually used the chat in this, the, these cases and I tell them like, wait for the wave to crash. Okay, so let's see. So we have Yumi Sivir with no flash. So what you should do... Okay, let's see if you did what I told you. So you should walk this direction and never use your Q ever until you get closer so what you do is you walk closer and then when you're melee range because you are gonna get melee range just by walking if she starts running now you can still walk this direction and get melee you just out attack an e and you take her shield and then you q when you're melee and it's a guaranteed q because she will be slowed by either your e or your red buff and then you q in fact they have a, a leasing gang that is exactly like this in challenger and that's what i did i will show you See, that's really bad. Why do you need the ward if you can just walk this direction and not ward, right? And then you can save your ward and Q. You can save your Q for the melee range and then save your ward for like this, the ward hub. So notice how the only reason you needed to use the ward hub is because of bad pathing. You're pathing like you were doing this, then you do this, and now you're pathing this direction. If you path this direction, you never need the ward hub. Look at how long the lane is. Do you care about meeting her here instead of here? No, you still kill her either way. See, the only reason you need to work up is because you are walking to her. If you are walking here, you never need the work up. See? Now Yumi runs away because of that, I guess. So yeah, this is a, a perfect... I'm happy you sent this one. This is a perfect example of bad gap. Okay, gank approach pathing. You approach the gank in a really, really wrong way. So clicking in the incorrect place. The last one you have. I'm actually gonna show you a clip that I have playing listening in Challenger in a gank that is very much like that one. Uh da -da -da. where is it? Let me see. Amira in Leasing Pathing Gang. It should be this one. Right? It's called Leasing Pathing Gang. Has to be this one. No, it's not this one. Leasing again. No. I I know that I have a leasing gang here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's this one. Okay. So this is a kind of a ELO game, I think. So let me see what ELO these guys are. So Duplo, for example. Just to know if this is actually what I mean, Duplo. Oh, he changed his name. I don't know. But this is... Sagittaria here was my gun that was like 900 LP. So this is probably a challenger game. But I want to show you how I had a gun that was very much like yours. Look at this. 
the setup is very similar, right? I'm approaching, I'm listening and approaching the same way you were approaching. But notice how by passing correctly, I don't need to use my word hop nor my queue. And then I can save my word hop to finish the game later. Look. See where I'm walking? See where you were walking and where I'm walking? Okay. Now look, she flashes and I have word hop. See? Yeah. See the difference? Yeah. <clears throat> Let's go with Orc. My friend Orc. I hope you didn't. Don't do it to me. Oh no, you did it to yours. Okay, you're still playing Bolivar. I thought you were gonna play Ramos. I played a little bit of Ramos. I did okay. Okay, okay. I also tried to pick up Pantheon that did not go well. Oh, you didn't like Pantheon? Uh, okay. No, I'm just doing poorly. I just, I'm figuring it out. I just recommended him to you because of the voice lines too. <laughs> hey, I, I like the character though. Yeah, yeah, Feels yeah, really yeah. fun. I've had a lot of success on Pantheon just real quick. Uh, there's a really cool, I think he's like Challenger one trick Pantheon called Spear Shot. He had a really Love Spear Shot. Yeah. He's fucking funny too. So, to begin with, Vic, by the way, guys, this is Vic right now. He's a master, 55% win rate, so this is why I can be mean to him. We go way, way back. Like, Vic, why are you not going behind? You had so much time. Um, I did have a lot of time. I wasn't going behind because I was waiting for Aesol to walk up. I didn't want to be near Tower because I, I thought know. he would run to Raptor Camp no, with his... We, uh, with his can't, right? I mean, you, this is where Bolivar's insane speed comes into play, right? You have way more speed than him. But that's the thing also. Like, if he's going to run to Raptor's camp, he can do it from here as well, right? Like, you being here doesn't prevent him from running to Raptor's camp either way. It's just that if you go behind him, the only place he can go is Raptor's. But if you go here, he can go to the tower. <laughs> but let's see. It would be different, by the way, guys. If this is was if this was like level six, Aesol, you can push him to a tower. That's different. <laughs> but yeah, all this time you were waiting, you could have easily went behind him. So basically, you had a thing, right? Like, why would he walk to the river instead of to his tower? That's pretty obvious. Only because right? Lee Sin is there. Right. That's pretty obvious. Like, by the way, guys, this is a replay. The real game, he's not seeing Lee Sin, okay? Um, because, like I told you, this is why you should have went behind him. Because, look, if you go behind him, the only way he can go is, like, up and kind of this way, in my opinion. Because even if this way, well... Yeah, so that's what I think. If you go this way, if he goes... To the river, that means listen is there and it's a hundred percent guaranteed because otherwise he would go this way, right? So this is why it would have been so much better to go from behind because you know whether listen is there or not. Because he will go think about it. If listen is not here and you go from behind, you pass this way as ASOL, don't you? <laughs> so if you pass this way, it's guaranteed that listen is there. Yeah, that's not a good flash. I don't think I like this flash at all, actually, because you already had the slow on him. So there, there's only one thing that can happen. If you already had the slow on him, it means two things. He either has to path back to dodge the slow, which means you would have caught him with your speed and play the red buff slow. Or if he keeps walking and gets slowed, then you reach with your auto attack after and keep slowing. So the flash does nothing, because he, you're guaranteed to catch him here. Like. You're guaranteed to catch him, 100%. There's no way in hell that you don't get to him, okay? Because if he goes mm. forward, he gets slowed. If he goes back, you catch him even sooner. So it's a, this is a checkmate. In fact, this is why Ari Charm was so good, in my opinion, because it forces him to sidestep backwards, which means that now he's in, like, between a rock and a hard place. 
either gets slowed or passes back and gets hit by you with a red buff. So this flash was really, really unnecessary. I think this was the main mistake because if you didn't flash here, then you could have saved it for his flash. Or he doesn't have flash. I guess you could have saved it for finishing the kill. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh. Well, you would have. Yeah, this is the gank that shouldn't have worked but did. Yeah, I mean, you still when have flash. You. So. Here, you would have yeah. had flash, see? Yeah, yeah. So remember my listen clip that I just showed? This is where I mm -hmm. could have ward hopped. So you could have flash here. So your flash was unnecessary. Yeah, this could have been a double kill. There's no way he takes that, right? Okay. No, no. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, save your flash there because be patient. If you know that you're guaranteed to get him, then you don't need to flash. Do you have the clip of the... Uh... Yeah, this is a good one. And then the Yone one after. Already I see a mistake there, right? Like, why, why not let Ash get into a bush alone? So that if there's a ward, she can take it and they don't see you. This is not thinking about the enemy's vision, guys. Remember what I said earlier? You're giving the enemies information here. I think I saw this a lot in your clips where you give the enemies a lot of information. I, I remember when I coached you on Gramus the other time, the last time, mm -hmm. that you recalled a lot inside the enemy's vision. For example, as a jungler, never recall inside the enemy's vision, okay? That's so bad because you're just telling the enemy so much information, like you think it doesn't matter. You doing this and walking in the bush with Ash, for example, tells the Lee Sin, the Aurelian Soul, and the Kled how they should play the following minute of game. Yep. So you're giving them so much information. Small kitten IRL. Did you lose to this person? It's actually the same game as uh as before. So and uh I don't I don't want to talk about the end of this game. Are you gonna it open? was a shit show. Again, same thing, right? Why not just ult without using your Q and then save your Q for after the ult? You're wasting so much Q time here. If you're gonna ult the tower anyway, why do you need to use waste like a good chunk of the Q gap closer in this? That is meaningless because you were gonna jump to the tower. So you see how your gap closing in the direction opposite to the enemy path to safety? They want to walk here, and your gap closing here. Just save mm -hmm. your Q, just hold the tower without using Q, and then use your Q after you. Imagine that you didn't use Q. Imagine that you hold it. By the way, look at how you could have ulted from here and you didn't need the Q. But look at how, imagine you pop the Q now. You would have gotten her, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's like a really early Q and walking in the opposite direction. And by the way, the only reason this goes super wrong is because you're walking inside of enemy vision. Like, think, <laughs> imagine you are a small kitten IRL <laughs> and you see the, the Bolivar do this. It's like so obvious it's gonna go for a tower dive. By the way, this is why small kitten IRL went ahead and warded. Okay, this is why did he do that, or she, because you didn't wait for Ash to clear this ward, okay? So, in fact, I was right, the only reason this gank didn't go right is because you didn't wait until Ash clears the ward. And tiny things like this, this is Master, remember guys, tiny things like, like this ma matter so much in Master, because this is the information that you give the enemy is like more valuable to a Master player than to a Gold player. And the information that you were there led to the kitten warding here and Aurelian Soul has prio and Ari has no prio. So now Aurelian will instantly begin walking down because they saw you in this ward. Look at Aurelian here, guys. See that? And this all snowball from this ward that spotted Bolivar. Had Bolivar waiting in this, waited in this bush and Ash clears the ward, none of this would have happened. Tarek wouldn't have warded here, which means Aurelian Soul wouldn't have started passing downwards. And they would have only reacted when they actually saw Bolivar appearing below the tower, which means Aurelian Soul would have came here like 10 15 seconds later. And Tarek would have probably played this way worse and Sivir as well. Because Sivir cleared the whole wave instantly because they saw Bolivar here. So this is just a ward buff. But I wait until your Ash clears. If a teammate is walking into a bush, don't walk into a bush with them. Let them walk first. So from the point of view of the enemy, it looks like there's only one person there.
Different game, right? Different game. There's no way this goes wrong, right? Unless the Leah <coughs> comes. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, so what I want to see is the following. I want to see you not use that Q until you're closer. You know why? Because the minions mm -hmm. are tanking the tower. There's no rush. There's no rush. Patience when diving is crucial. Minions are tanking tower. Just wait. Don't rush. See, that's what I mean. That's so bad. Why do you rush like this? Minions are tanking the tower. You can literally walk to a guy and then E when you're closer and then Q and guarantee that the E hits because he's going to be stunned. But it's like you're doing the same combo always, even though here you should have just been more patient. Why blow everything here when he doesn't have... You, you don't have aggro, he's like not even aware. Yeah, and now you don't have anything, you gotta blow flash and he can like run away with E and Q. And they are gonna make some omelette with the Anivia egg. Where are they? Oh, this... I don't think I record the whole clip, but we both die eventually. Oh, wait, what? Uh, you don't go for this, though. You shouldn't go for I'm, this. I'm dumb. That's how. <laughs> okay. No way. You said both die, and Evie as well? Everything here. Yeah. You know how I could predict this was... Look. This was my train of thought. I said, there's no way this goes wrong. And you said, it went wrong. And I said, okay, therefore, I didn't, by the way, guys, I've never seen this clip before. I, I, I thought, therefore, if, if he's telling me this goes wrong, the only way I can think about it going wrong is if he uses the Q too early and the E too early. And it's what he did. But we can predict this. If he doesn't use the Q and E like this super early, this never goes wrong. Okay? Remember, guys, the guy is not even... You're not even taking the tower, the guy is like, low HP, just walk to him patiently and then you Q and E when you're melee. The way he can dodge it, he dies. And after your Q, Anivia lands a free Q stun. So, it's a, this is why I said there's no way this goes wrong. Like, if you play this right, even if this guy was faker, he pretty much dies. Or at the very least, like, flashes away and then third Qs and E's and whatever, but like, there's no way you die like this. Is Zone where here? He sent me a clip, but I don't know if he's here. So this is another student that sent me a clip, but he, I think he's not here. We're gonna watch it anyway. Well, I'm gonna explain what he said. He sent me his clip and said, I have a clip of me trying to counter gank and prevent a tower dive on my top lane. And I wish to know what I should have really done. And then he said, now that I look at it, I just inted. <laughs> okay. But he's saying that he panicked or something. Didn't know what to do. So the way you should play this is you just W the Mordecai, sir. Out attack. So it's like W, out attack Q. If you ask me, why do you out attack before the Q? What you do with every champion, you attack between abilities, but not only that, you apply a conqueror stack, and then the Q does more damage. Why do you W? To apply the slow as early as you can, to keep applying conqueror stacks. Why are you not going for mastery? Because he's gonna meditate, and if you go for mastery, then Mordekaiser survives 100%. But if you kill Mordekaiser, then mastery is trapped in this half of the map, so he's either gonna go and get executed, or you chase him and eventually kill him. If you go for mastery, you're never gonna kill more than ever, I promise. Unless he like tower dives as well or something. I don't know. Okay. I told you. Right? I didn't see this clip before either. But there's only one way things like this can go wrong. And I, I said which one it was. Oh yeah. And now, exactly what I said. Like if you go for mastery, you're gonna never kill more and he flashes away. Now you don't get any of them. At this point, what he should have been doing is W and Q the wave to farm the whole wave and at least get level 5 and some gold. Rindamir doesn't have TP, so this wave, as far as I'm concerned, is Kane's wave. Taxation without representation. This is why the USA had a war, because you're going to tax the whole wave without doing anything for him. <laughs> so you're going to be like the British here. you got to be like the British. 
to get a taxis without any representation. Yeah, no. So look at how many minions he's losing because of this. Yeah. Also, another thing that you see a lot of people doing low elo, guys, never take ghost if you're below diamond. Why? Because people don't know how to use ghost below diamond. Why? Because ghost is a spell that is used preemptively. You pop ghost when you know how the fight is going to play out and you know that you will need it in the future. Because it lasts 10 seconds and it resets on kills. But look at, see how this guy only popped ghost when he was 1 HP here as if it was like flash, that you flash when you're 1 HP. Ghost is not like that, ghost is like you're supposed to use it at the beginning of a fight. So it's very skill. This is why ADCs in Challenger take ghost all the time, but in Loilo I never recommend it because you're just not gonna know when to use it. So if you look at my games, I have a ghost on Sivir, but I wouldn't recommend it to my lower ELO students, okay? Oh yeah, didn't should have went on Mordecai's here, should have stuck the conquer, should have got in the wave after that. That's pretty much it. Okay, so let's see. this one out. So I don't know if I have any more clips. I think I don't. Guess I'm mistaken here. I think I don't have any more clips. So guys, any more questions? What do you think? The session is recorded for those who asked. Thank you, clips. Okay, sorry, Techno. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. Oh, is this safe for work? Can I open this? Let's <laughs> see. That's... That doesn't sound good. Uh, WebM. That's. Okay, download. Someone's sending porn to the teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, no. Okay, let's go with a successful gank. How is this a gang? Are you level 18? Wait, what? You sure this is a gang? Should be okay. This is... Are you sure this is like the correct one? Because I don't know if it's like a gang. You're level 18. But we will see it anyway. Let's see. I guess we, even though it's not a gang, you're level 18, this is not a gang, but it's still a good analyzable thing. So, okay. Don't use W, first of all. Easiest way to miss W is to use it. This goes for all champions with important CC skill shots, Spike, Q, R, Charm. We don't use it at the most obvious moment. Why? Because dodging in League of Legends is 90% prediction. Therefore, the easiest way to miss a skill is to throw it at the most predictable moment. This is why, by the way, I told Orc with Bolivar to not use the E at the beginning, because that's when Yon is going to be more aware of it. But same goes here. If you use it at the beginning, you're going to miss it. So what you should do is instead go melee, our attack on Q, and then only after our attack on Q, you try to W. And then, even if you miss it, you have another Q. See? That's just coin flip. You coin flipped that the Kalista was gonna jump in that direction. You do this a hundred times, you're gonna be wrong 80 of them, okay? This is just a coin flip that is you relying on Kalista being bad. So when you do this, you're gonna only win and be correct when the enemy is actually bad. And yeah, you're gonna win. There's no way she wins now after you hit this Q because you can just auto Q, hold, heal like 2000 HP because your champion is balanced. Another bad thing that you did here is that you left her body too soon. So the way you should have done this is you stay inside of her. <laughs> hey, that sounds. You stayed. Uh, you stay inside the old. <laughs> long enough to allow your W, E, and Q to reset their cooldowns. 
Instead, you left instantly and you still have no W and E. See? That's really bad. You're supposed to stay inside so that your W and E get the cooldowns reset. Okay? So this was a successful kill that only was just a stat check kill. You have more items on here and you kill, but it was not very well played because of that reason that I mentioned. Now we have a Diana gang. Another balanced champion. This person only plays balanced champions. I'm just memeing. Uh, okay. Did that miss? Oh, that hit. Interesting. So this is kind of 3v1, isn't it? Because you're like going into a seer and action is over the wall with no hook thingy. So he can never help you. And you have a minion wave with cannon and three casters. Gonna swap aggro and hit you now. And you have Bolivar coming as well. You have Orc here. Orc, what do you think about this Bolivar skin? It's so lame. Kind of bad, it right? looks piss yellow. It looks like a minion from the big old me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the minion skin would be way better. Dude, it's literally That's... a minion, look. <laughs> okay, but... You're winning 1v3. Basically, this is not being aware of your surroundings. 1v3, I say, because the wave is here. It is meant to look like a minion, I'm pretty sure, right? It's like a, literally a minion. No, anyway. it's supposed to be a... Uh... Isn't that oh. the El Rayo skin? So this is the right clicks I was talking about, guys. The only reason she doesn't kill this guy is because she's right clicking on him instead of ahead of him and therefore after this one out attack here Asir runs away and is not in out attack range anymore had he clicked on Asir and then on the ground she would have chased Asir without losing any distance she would have out attacked Asir twice had that happened she would have resetted the HP with a triumph then she can red smite the Bolivar and Q him and maybe they can kill him with action and she dies as well but it would have been a 2 for 1 and action killing the Bolivar gets her resurrected that's what you should have done, okay? And this all stems from you not right-clicking on the ground. There. Here. You see how much distance you're losing? That's because you're not right-clicking on the ground. You right-clicked on him. Remember, when you right-click on someone, you only get in the max range of your hour attack. For Diana, that's like, what, 150, I think. And so you should have been closer to 150, but you are not. Okay. Thanks for the clips. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much all there is for me today. Um, so if you have any more questions, you can ask it. Otherwise, I'm going to be saving the session recording now.